What's up, Blueberries? My name is Alton Hilt, and welcome to the next episode of Learning Dust. In today's episode, we're going to be playing with the Mimitar starter fit. If you want to check out the fit, be sure to look at episode 5, where I discuss fitting skills. You'll see the fit fully laid out there. But I'm going to skip that here. Now what I'm doing at this point is checking who's on each team. I recognize there's a squad on both sides, so I'm going to try to join the squad on this side to help me deal with the challenge of having a coordinated enemy squad on the other side. Now I recognize some of the names, so I know I'm going to be facing good gear, good teamwork, and I want to compensate for that by playing more team-oriented this match. Now these guys on my team are communicating with each other, but they speak French. I don't speak French, so I don't understand them. Now as it turns out, my Bluetooth was off, so the sound was routed through the my uh, capture card. So you might hear them in the background. Apologize if it's distracting. So you probably noticed in many of the other videos that I tend to play a lone wolf. And this is partially because um, most of the time I play a scout, I like the skirmishing role. I like hitting uh, from the side where I'm least expected. But in this match, I know I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm trying to play with my teammates, but those blaster turrets are cutting me off there. Uh, they're both manned, I recognize that. So I'm going to take a long way around. Blaster turrets were recently tweaked and were given quite a bit of spread on the turrets you could mount to vehicles, but the installations weren't touched, so they still have laser pinpoint accuracy out to their effective range, and I just don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to come around here and try to join up with my squad mate as we push for Delta. Now the combat rifle is a very effective rifle. Uh, it's been, received a lot of uh, nerfs recently to try to bring it in line, but I still think it's a great weapon. It's just not as overpowered as it was. Now, what made it overpowered wasn't so much that the individual damage per shot was horrible, but because as a burst fire weapon, each pull of the trigger will result in three bullets downrange. And you could hold that trigger down for a very measured and metered uh, result. So it would go burst, 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 wait, burst, burst, burst. But if you pulse the trigger, you could get the gun to fire much, much faster. So that's where the combat rifle really shines. If you can maintain your accuracy while rapidly pulling the trigger, you're going to be able to deal quite a bit of damage. Uh, your DPS is going to go much, much higher than what you can get just by pulling down the trigger and letting it decide how quickly to fire those three round bursts. And as you noticed, it doesn't have a ton of recoil. As a low damage per shot weapon, its recoil is pretty manageable. Although there will be times where you're pulsing that trigger and it's going to get uncontrollable. But if you let off, if you let the weapon reset, it'll go back to being very nice metered recoil that you can easily manage. Some other things to consider when you're playing the combat rifle is that you're going to run through ammo very quickly. As a low damage per shot weapon, you need a lot of bullets to take out an enemy. It was pretty typical during this match to, to use up half of my ammo for one target. And that meant, means that after every engagement, I'm reloading. And I have to reload in order to be able to deal with one or two opponents. So that is going to be a struggle. If you find yourself really enjoying the combat rifle, make sure to invest in your rapid reload because it's going to pay dividends. You're reloading so often that the faster you can reload, the faster you can get back into the fight. It also pays to have a good sidearm that you can fall back on. And while the Militia variant deals just as much damage as its standard counterpart, like all of the Militia variants, it carries less ammo. Uh, about 11 less rounds. So it's worth it to get a point in the combat rifle because you need those rounds. So reload a lot, watch your ammo, make sure that you get to an ammo dump or carry a nano hive, preferably. Now in the starter fits, you're only going to be able to fit a compact nano hive if you work some fitting magic, but it, it will be worth it. 
um, especially if you don't carry grenades you don't have to worry about that compact nano hive being eaten up by that grenade before you get your ammo replenished or if you don't throw grenades often like I don't. Some of the things to consider with the combat rifle is that it has a good range so not as much range as the scrambler rifle or the rail rifle but still it's described as a medium to long range weapon so you have great range on it and you still have really good close range capabilities hip firing is very tight and accurate and it seems to strike the perfect balance between being too spread out and being too tight so when you get in those close quarters fights it's easy to hip fire you can still get quite a bit of damage on the target without having to zoom in and you'll see me do that a lot. You'll see me, I like to zoom in, I like the um, the sight here, but I also recognize that it's not practical for most engagements in close range like that. So I miss a couple bullets because I'm hip firing, but at the same time, I would miss more if I tried to aim at that close range. So let's talk about the medium frame, the militia medium frame. The militia received quite the buff when the CCP adjusted the shield extenders. They're shield tankers, but their focus is speed, so they don't have as high a buffer natively as the Kaldari, and they don't regen as quickly as the Kaldari, but they make up for it by being slightly faster. Now some would say they're not fast enough to compensate for having less total HP, but with the tweaks they've recently made to a game feature called Bullet Snare. And basically what that was is a feature of the auto-aim. The auto-aim would, in order for it to work effectively, required that when you started taking bullets that it would slow your character down. Now CCP in their Hotfix Alpha reduced this value to zero. So in theory Anytime you're shot, it shouldn't reduce your speed at all. Now, in practice, I have quite seen quite a number of examples where this isn't the case, where somebody under fire does slow down, but there are quite a number of speed bugs in the game where the where you'll just be running along and all of a sudden you'll just start running slower. So it may not be related to taking fire at all. I have yet to test it extensively, but I can tell you that the bullet snare effect has been reduced quite significantly. It's still possible. It's much more likely now that as a speed uh, suit, you'll be able to escape the fire of an enemy target when you come under, and you're going to need that as Minotaur. Their their racial um, profile is very much hit and run, very much skirmish oriented. So you notice here, I tried to play the lone wolf, and it didn't work out for me. The the enemy is just coordinating too well and it's very unlikely that I can take two targets even playing with good tactics. So I'm going to try to hook back up with the squad and play with some support and it's going to improve how I perform quite significantly. One, you'll notice that the passive scanners of my teammates I can view, I can see them and that gives me a heads up. There's a lot of scouts running around and I'm not seeing them on my own so I can use the passive scanning capabilities of my teammates to compensate. And the likelihood that I will be targeted by any one enemy is fairly low when you're running in a group. So if you can maintain your situational awareness, you can get first or second shot capabilities on the enemy. So he's here, he's distracted by my teammate, so I can go in for the kill. So team gameplay is something I highly recommend. It's very difficult to do with, with as a new player, you don't know anybody. You're just kind of relying on the fact that there are people in game to squad up with. Now you can squad using the squad finder and I do recommend it if you're so inclined, but the results can be somewhat sketchy. You don't always know what types of matches you're gonna get into, but that's dust in general. Now the, so one of the things that you see me here is trying to use cover. I stay close to things. I know as a shield tanker, as soon as I get about half shields, I need to head for cover. 
I don't have a ton of armor. I have more than I use than I'm used to as a scout, but I still don't have a lot of armor to rely on. So I need to be very conscientious here about where and when I engage. Just like I mentioned with the Kaldari, I have to be uh, very aware of where I can go for cover to let my shields recharge because I can't, I don't have a very high buffer. I can't just uh, fight and take it and out tank my enemy. I have to play more strategically. So in this case, I was getting, I was really tempted to chase after that individual over there on the left, but I thought, no, what, I'm going to support my team here. I'm going to play team oriented. And it pays off. Um, so I'm, I can see on their passives, we're sharing information, we're working. Now, ignoring this guy here is probably going to get me in, is going to get me into trouble. But once again, I said no. I'm going to stick with my teammate. I'm going to support him, and that guy notices me and comes back around. And I just find myself in a bad situation where I can't. He's a shotgunner. I'm going. Oh crap! And I get stuck right there. So he's easily able to take me out. Now, one of the really nice things about the Mimtar is that with a higher base speed, they can strafe a little bit faster. And being a shield tanker, they don't have the movement penalties of an armor tanker. So I can jump higher, I can jump more frequently, I have more stamina at my disposal, I can run faster, and I can re I recharge that stamina much more quickly. This pays off quite a bit in this match where there are a number of shotgunning scouts. I can't see them until they start attacking me, but oftentimes they don't quite get a full hit because I'm strafing quite a bit, and then I'm able to jump, make it difficult for them to track me, and in some of the cases I even survive and take out the shotgunning scout. This is something that I wouldn't be able to do with an Amar frame or a Galente frame. Now the shotgun does increase damage to shields, so as a shield tanker I'm more vulnerable. But I also have more, see right here is an example of where I try and fail because I hit the wall. But the first time you saw it, it worked. I had some movement, I jumped in the right direction, I was able to get some distance and some shots on the enemy. come back in here. Now my teammates have gone. I thought some of my teammates were here. I wasn't paying much attention to the map and I find that I'm kind of alone. I've got one other blueberry here but I can't rely on that so much. Um, like in most games, the blue so I see I caught out of the corner of my eye the cloak reflection there and I was able to start creating space. And that was in large part due to my base movement speed and being a shield tanker, having the stamina to jump and to move quickly. So part of it is knowing your surroundings, catching a lucky break, moving in the right direction when you need to. Now something I haven't explicitly stated is in Dust it really pays to learn how to shoot and move at the same time. Very rarely will it benefit you to, so there was an example I just want to highlight real quick. It seemed like as soon as I started shooting him, his base movement speed slowed down. His animation was appearing to move faster than he was visually moving across my screen. Now that could be due to any number of factors, but I think that's where a lot of the uh, complaints about the bullet trap not being uh, eliminated are coming from, because there's still examples where visually it appears that the enemy has slowed down because of bullet fire, whether that's the case or not. Okay, so back to the point I was trying to make. One of the things that you'll need to do is learn to shoot and move at the same time. It's very difficult to master in dust because the control scheme is, well, to be honest, it's bad. It's just a, a bad control scheme and unfortunately, Improving your gun game in Dust basically means getting good at a bad input system. Most games uh, you'll be able to adapt and adjust pretty quickly because they all follow a general standard of input and sensitivity. 
But in Dust, it's different. For whatever reason, they've chosen to go with a different input scheme. And it means that you won't be able to match exactly what you're used to or accustomed to. So that's quite the challenge. And if you move off to other games, you'll find that coming back to Dust is like you haven't played again. Because you're having to get used to that different and worse uh, input scheme. But part of what makes... Um, so right here is where a teammate saves me. And I'm glad he did, because I might not have. I was in the middle of a reload, so the shotgunner chose a perfect time to attack me. Just didn't anticipate the heavy spawning in at that moment. What I've The difference I've often noticed in the gun game between new and uh, veteran players is that new players tend to stop and then try to aim, where veteran players have adapted and learned how to aim and shoot while still maintaining movement. So strafing movement side to side, forward or backwards, jumping around. This is going to, mastering this technique is going to make a big difference in your ability to survive firefights and to uh, move from the bottom of the kill board to the top. So here's an example of where I chose to stand still, but it was for a second, and as soon as I was done, I was moving again. So some games reward you for very tactical, um, slow gameplay. Dust isn't one of them. Dust rewards you for being on the move, being active and aware, looking around, uh, not staying still. Now, as, as a plasma cannon player, I actually prefer when you stand still because it makes it easier for me to shoot you. But just in, increasing the base movement that you do, constantly moving side to side, even when you're scanning for targets, will make you less of a target for snipers, for uh, shotgunners, for plasma cannoners. The, and, and it seems like such a simple thing to say, but because Dust's control scheme is so poor when compared to other games the tendency for new players is to stop in order to decrease the variability in the input. I remember I doing that myself. When I first got started I was having to stop because it was difficult enough to try to control the my, my aiming, much less trying to move and control that aiming at the same time. But as I got better I found myself more capable, more able. So that was an example. I, I was out of ammo of my main. I'd, I'd switched to my sidearm, and then the shotgunner decloaked. So this was a tough match. By all standards, um, this was should have been a very difficult match for me to do well in. But as you'll see here, I actually managed to do pretty well. And part of that was because I chose to try to play more team oriented, to stick with my teammates more, and to not do the lone wolf. Um, 25 kills, 8 deaths, so more deaths than, than in the others, but the kill death ratio was still really good. I was very pleased with this match um, and how well it went, all things considered. So I hope you learned something. As always, my name is Alton Hilt, and I will see you in the sandbox.